Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for this lecture, uh, this series of videos, we're going to call it Topic 3, and I'm going to introduce to you the topic of Reinforced Concrete Structures. I appreciate that you're here taking the time to view these videos, you could have been anywhere else and you chose to be here. So let's get started. Lovely. So uh, to talk about reinforced concrete structures, we must start by uh, discussing a little bit about concrete. I know you've covered it in some of your other courses, but just as a refresher, concrete is typically made up in its most basic form by four ingredients. You see them here on the screen. Top left, you see cement, okay? Typically Portland cement, it's the binder, okay? Then top right, you see two more ingredients, fine and coarse aggregate, which is a fancy way of saying pieces of the right kind of stone that are, can be larger in size or very fine in size if they're sandy in composition. And finally, at the bottom middle, you see water. Okay, those are the four ingredients of the most basic form of concrete. Uh, when you mix them all together, then you get uh, what we know as concrete, which is a very soupy, sometimes thicker soup, sometimes less thick soup uh, that is formless. Uh, I also want to remind you that the topic of reinforced concrete uh, structures is covered also in your textbook in chapter 21, 22, 23, which I recommend you review. Uh, concrete is quite the historical uh, construction material, and I mean that in the literal sense. The uh, um, use of concrete goes back hundreds if not thousands of years. Um, now the recipe for concrete in the Roman times was actually lost after the fall of the Roman Empire, and a more modern version of it was used after that, but it's been around for quite some time in more or other types of formats. Okay. Uh, but like I was mentioning, when you put, make concrete, when you put it together, it's formless. It has a somewhat soupy consistence, consistency to it. Uh, be, and uh, the nice thing about concrete is that it will actually take the shape of a container it's put in. And that's one of the great things about concrete, that it can be used to make amazing shapes as long as you form it correctly. And you can see here some examples of forming, that is the containers into which you're then gonna put concrete to give it its shape. Here you see examples of forming for a wall, which is basically like making a sandwich. The forms are the two pieces of bread and the concrete is the filler between the bread. And depending on how far apart the slices of bread are, you have thicker or thinner walls. If the bread slices are angled, you get a curved maybe wall okay but that's the important thing about concrete it will take the shape of the container of the form that you put it into uh, so i'll give you an example using our very own ace building during the construction of our ace building here is a portion of reinforced concrete that i photographed you see it finished but let's take it step by step before you can get this finished uh, cavity, wall cavity, um, you start off first by making the forms. That is the inside of that open of that uh, cavity itself. Then you add the reinforcing steel, and you even include uh, the portions that are going to be open for doors. Then you put the next slice of bread, if you will, on the outside. You pour the concrete between those two layers. And after a certain amount of time, once the concrete has hardened and is no longer soupy, you remove the outer layer and the inside layer to get this. Okay? An analogy, I guess, for a lot of North American people would be, say, making jello. Okay? Jello, when you make it, is liquid. And the only way that it solidifies is if you put it in a container to give it shape and you let it sit at a certain temperature. Okay. Now, the great thing about concrete too is that uh, depending on the forms, that is the containers of the concrete you put it into, you can get amazing, lovely, beautiful shapes, kind of like this. Okay. 
I'm also taking this opportunity to remind you that I'm going to be linking a number of videos and resources in the description for this video. So be sure to check them out because they'll point you towards the next uh, videos related to this topic, Reinforced Concrete. Very well. Um, when it comes to concrete, we should talk about the two, uh, two types of forces that we consider for concrete structures and any structures in general. The first one is compression, which you see here. And we'll define compression as a force or a set of forces on an element, any element, that tries to shorten that element. If you have forces on an element that try to shorten that element, we'll call that compression. If we have forces on an element that try to make that element longer to elongate that element, we'll call that force tension. Why do I bring up tension and compression? Well, it turns out that concrete is great in compression. Okay, so for example, columns. Yeah. However, concrete is not very good in tension. To put some numbers, typically, if you have an element made out of concrete, let's call it a concrete column, just to call it something, and you put a force on it, okay? Let's say if you can put a force on it of 100 pounds, or I don't know, 100 kilonewtons before that column cracks. So it has a capacity, say, of 100 kilonewtons or pounds in compression. Well, if you were to try to put a tensile force on that column, it would not resist even 10% of that. Structurally speaking, that means zero, okay? So essentially, in structural engineering, for all intents and purposes, concrete is nil, a zero, when it comes to resisting tensile forces. Well, that's a problem, right? Because all structures resist both tension and compression. Let me give an example. Let's say if you have a beam like this, right? So as you can see, based on the force that's here, that, that force is trying to make that beam smile. Let's see if I can pause it right here. Okay, so you can see this uh, smile in the beam. Well, if this beam were made out of concrete, just to pick a material, what's happening now is that the bottom portion of that beam, the fibers there are trying to pull apart. They're in tension. So that's where you start getting cracking in a concrete beam. And that's a problem because concrete is terrible in tension. At the top, along the top of the beam, it's fine if it's made out of concrete because the top fibers of the beam are in compression. They're getting closer together. And concrete is great in compression. So what do we do? Well, we have to reinforce that concrete beam. And what's used in reinforced concrete typically is steel. And that's because steel is great in both tension and compression. So here's how reinforced concrete works. You try to put steel, which is much better in tension than concrete is, inside the concrete wherever you expect there to be tension in that concrete. So in this specific case you see here, because the bottom of the beam would be in tension, you would try to put steel near the bottom of that concrete beam. That way, any crack that forms at the bottom of the beam as a result of tension is minimized as much as possible. It cannot be avoided. Cracks cannot be avoided in concrete structures. Okay, No matter how much we try, they just cannot. Okay, But you want to keep them to a minimum. Okay, uh, Basically so that it does not affect the performance of that structure, the uh, perception of safety of that structure, and the possibility of infiltration of agents like water, salt, and the like. So this is where reinforcing of concrete comes into play. It's about being able to put steel in the right places in concrete structures so that it will take, the steel will take the tension that the concrete cannot. I'm going to be linking for you at the bottom also an interesting video about the secrets of reinforcing, uh, which will take you also to the channel by this gentleman.
Uh, the channel and this video, but all of the videos on this channel are very accessible. And this gent is really uh, enamored with concrete in a good way. Uh, he espounds the virtues of concrete, so I'd recommend you check it out. Okay. So here's what would happen then if we looked at what a reinforced concrete bean looked like by using the powers of X-ray vision. Okay, if we could see through the concrete into a reinforced concrete beam, we would be able to see the steel embedded in it. So let's say, for example, for this beam, just like the one we saw bending previously, we had this force in the middle of the beam. Okay, it's trying to make this beam smile. So as we learned previously, when it's trying to make the beam smile, the bottom fibers of that beam, because it's concrete, not because it's concrete, sorry, the bottom fiber, fibers, period, are trying to elongate, to pull apart their intention, and concrete has terrible intention. That's why you would add steel near the bottom of the beam. See these thick steel uh, bars? Okay. Then uh, you would also put some steel near the top here, that's called hanger steel. And it's basically there to allow for these hooked, kind of like ring-like steel portions reinforcing to be placed there as well. These uh, loopy steel, they're called stirrups and they're there to resist shear in a concrete beam, okay? All right, now let's give another example of see if we can identify the portions of tension in a steel beam like this one, okay? You see the bottom supports at the bottom, you see a concrete beam on top of these supports and then some forces on it. This is kind of like the setup of a trampoline, like right? a diving board, a diving board, okay? So say if you had something like this next to a pool, okay? This is kind of how it's set up, uh, except that it's made of reinforced concrete. So if you have an applied force like this, it has been applied between the two supports, then the portion of the beam between the supports is trying to smile. That means that the bottom fibers of that portion is trying to pull apart this intention. So that is where you would put reinforcing steel, reinforcing steel, rebar, okay? That's why it's put there. Now, say if you put a force here at the very end, say if you're trying to dive off of that diving board, well, what you get is then the portion of the beam that cantilevers over that support, that is, goes past that support, the top fibers are in tension, right? Because it wants to bend and the top fibers are trying to pull apart. So that means that for those kind of loads, you would have to put the reinforcing near the top of the beam at those locations, okay? And that's what reinforced concrete design is all about. It is about figuring out for all kinds of loads where you expect there to be tension in a concrete element, and at those locations, you're gonna put steel in there so that the steel uh, resists the tension and not the concrete. So for example, uh, this figure that I plucked out of your textbook, say if you have, I don't know, a, a story of a, of a building, multi-story building with columns, uh, interior and exterior columns, whenever you have, uh, I don't know, um, occupants load there, you would get basically the kind of smiles from floor to floor to floor. And then those smiles will turn into frowns as that floor is attached to the column with a rigid connection. So that's why you get the reinforcing you see then in the bottom half, right? It goes along the bottom for, mo for all of it because those fibers are in tension. And then it also goes along the top in small parts near where the columns are because the beam is coming back into a frown at that location. Those fibers are in tension. And lastly, you can also see shear reinforcing in the form of stirrups. Those are the loopy portions of steel that you see here, okay? These are just some configurations for the stirrups. We'll chat more about this uh, maybe in a future video. Okay, so here's what I want to do now. I want to take you into additional videos from here. You're now going to get links at the bottom in the description to videos about columns, 
reinforced concrete columns, and then how to use some rules of thumb to figure out the dimensions of columns in reinforced concrete that you can possibly use for your working drawings course. There's also going to be links to videos about slabs, okay, explaining those a bit more, the reinforcing about slabs and how to evaluate and come up with rules of thumb for the dimensions of slabs. Similarly for beams, whether they're beams on their own or beams that are supporting slabs. So some video, a video about that and calculations about that. Next, there's going to be a video about your assignment too, the hand sketches I'm looking for you to duplicate. And lastly, some any additional calculation videos that are not covered by the ones that I mentioned previously. They're all going to be linked for you in the description at the bottom. If there is no video linked to that uh, type of video yet, it's in progress, so check back soon. Until then, I want to thank you for your time, okay? We're going to rock this topic, I know it, and thank you so much for being here.